Hello and welcome to the Midwest Learning with Google pre-party. We are so excited to have this pre-party and help you get registered and talk about some Google-y things. Um, so first up, I am Stephanie Howe. I'm an Instructional Technology Coordinator in Pickerington, Ohio. And then we have Fred. Hi, uh, I'm Frederick Ballou, usually go by Rick. Stephanie calls me Fred. Uh, I am a uh, instrumental music teacher from Bloomington, Minnesota. Um, but, you know, uh, don't hold that against me. I'm big into Google. And next up, we're going to bring on Eric. Hey, guys, uh, Eric Kurtz. I'm a um, educational technologist up in Northeast Ohio uh, doing uh, support for about 35 school districts in the Akron Canton area and a co-leader of VGEG Ohio with Stephanie. Fred, you want to introduce Travis? Oh, and this is Travis. Travis hey, True. everyone. Travis True um, from Topeka, Kansas, Tech Integration Specialist for Topeka Public Schools. And then we have Jen. Hello, I am Jen Lieben. I am a ele elementary uh, library media specialist currently on FMLA from GEG Chicagoland. And now we have Nadine Gillickson. I hope I said the D part right, did I? <laughs> it's okay. Hi, I'm Nadine Gilkison. I'm the District Technology Integration Specialist for Franklin Township Schools in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm also one of the Indiana GEG leads. And now we have Emily. Oh, she's muted. Maybe. Yep, I muted myself and then I forgot. <laughs> I'm Emily Thomas. I'm a tech integration analyst for an intermediate school district in the Twin Cities metro area of Minnesota and one of the uh, Minnesota metro area GEG leads. And there's Rochelle G. I'm not going to mess up the last name. Hi, everyone. I'm Rochelle Galang. Um, I am the GEG leader for GEG Michigan, and I am a technology integration specialist in Oakland County. And last up, we have Andy joining. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Andy Feckety. I'm an instructional technology coordinator for, or instructional technology specialist for Indian Prairie School District, um, a district about 40 minutes outside of Chicago. Um, and I'm also one of the leads for the GEG Chicago Land Group. All right, so welcome everyone. Thank you, GEG Midwest folks for coming on. Um, I think we say folks, don't we, in the Midwest? Yep, that's the thing. Okay, we don't say y'all, <laughs> so welcome. In the chat, we added our slide deck, so if you wanna join along, you are more than welcome to. Um, it has links to click on and other resources that are in this slide deck. All right, the first question that we kind of have for our panel um, is, what is learning with Google? Does anyone wanna cover that? see a lot of muted people next to their names. Uh, should we do the bad teacher thing and just call on someone? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jen, why don't you uh, start us off by telling us what is learning with Google? Hey, thanks, Rick. <laughs> learning with Google's... <laughs> <laughs> Learning with Google is uh, it's their free global live stream event open to everyone. Um, the cool news is you get to hear a lot of like what's new, what's coming up, what are the latest updates, you know, new features to look forward to. I think normally we would get to hear like this kind of cool stuff at like ISTE, but now that everything's virtual, we have the Learning with Google event. When is the Learning with Google event, Nadine? It's actually coming up this week on the 17th and 18th, depending upon where you live. Um, and as Jen was saying earlier, this is definitely an event that everybody looks forward to. As she also said, you know, I always looked forward to it at ISTE, getting to find out the latest and greatest. So it's kind of like a kid on Christmas morning or something. You know, it's like, oh, I wonder what all the new updates are going to be. And so in the chat, let us know what updates are you guys looking for? Um, anyone have something that they hope Google might release? Like, what's your wish list? <laughs> I'll, I'll start that off. Um, I'm more of a hoping they depreciate something. Uh, I would love to see Jamboard just go away. I'm, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> 
I, I would love being able to schedule multiple assignment, like different times at the, an assignment in Google Classroom, being able to schedule things at different times. That would be cool to release at different times, all from one spot. That'd be cool for me, but anyone else? I am always so excited about the new accessibility features and what's coming out. I don't have, I have, since we haven't heard yet, but I always look forward to that. Like, is there an accessibility section in the, in the uh, list of topics? And this year there is, so I'm really excited to see. I've always got an eye to that working in an intermediate district with lots of students in special education. Yeah, I really want to see some improvements to Google Classroom. Um, I'm ready to see what new and exciting things can help teachers make things faster to post. Um, how can students more faster collaborate, find tools, and those kind of things. So I'm really hoping there's some really good classroom updates. Yeah, multi-scheduling uh, classes is a must. <laughs> that would be so great. Yeah, so Absolutely. we will see uh, on um, Wednesday what updates actually do happen. And so real quick, if you've never even heard of this event, I'm going to put the link to sign up in the chat and we're going to walk you through how to do that. Uh, Travis, you want to walk people through how to sign up? Sure. It's super easy. So when you go to the oh, page, the website. Yep, that one <laughs> right at there at the top on the right hand side, there's a big register button or you can scroll down underneath the description and find that big register button. So you click on that um, and you just go ahead and you can sign in with your Google account and get registered for the event. They have all of these nice drop downs so that you can quickly um, register to your account. Yep. And and then once you're registered, you will then be able to see the schedule and sessions for your area. And you can add those to your Google Calendar so you can get quick notifications when there's uh, when there is a session that pops up and all that information and links to access that. Thanks, Travis. So now what should we kind of expect? I know we talked about like updates. Anyone else want to kind of share what we might expect on this day? We can kind of look over the agenda for the day. Chromebooks are still a thing, huh? Wow, all right. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> I, uh, I'm excited to hear what's to come for Google Meet because I actually have a Jamboard kiosk in my library and we have been using Google Meet as like a, um, oh, what would you call that? You know, like big business meetings where they have the camera and the microphone because the Jamboard kiosk has that. So we can do like those sorts of meetings with my hybrid in-person and remote students. It's kind of neat that they can actually talk to each other through the use of the kiosk. And I would love to see what like the new updates are for Meet that would kind of give us even more um, options and features and possibilities. Cool. I think it's nice that it's not only just like the Google applications, but like somebody mentioned earlier that they're going to cover, you know, updates with Chromebooks, basically all facets of, of Google for education. So that's what's nice. What I'm really excited about is the, uh, the, the uh, presenters and the speakers that are going to be leading this event. Right, so Sundar Pichai is welcoming everyone that is joining that day, um, the CEO of Alphabet and Google. Um, Andy Russell, who runs the whole Chrome team and Chromebooks, is leading the information on Chromebooks. Right, so you really know that the information you're getting by attending this event is coming from the, the, the right person, right? So if there's anyone that knows about the updates, it's gonna be the people that are presenting Right. We have the, you know, the project manager for Google for Education is going to be um, showing us what's new in Google Classroom. So it's great that that the leads of these projects are the ones that will be joining us that day um, to share the updates, the news, the information, um, as well as some exciting opportunities that are coming for um, educators across the country and around the world um, to be 
uh, engage with Google products and, and teams going forward. And so everything for the event is all on this website. If you just click down on this drop arrow, you can see the whole event. So maybe you might have to mince certain parts of it. It will be recorded. Um, but just like Andy said, the Google Classroom, Google Meet. So this probably means there's going to be some updates coming our way in these different categories. Um, there's the accessibility that Emily was kind of excited about. So just looking over the agenda so you know what to expect um, will help you be prepared. And then how can you share your excitement about this event with others? So there's a lot of ways to get involved uh, before, during, and after the event. Um, so check out the Twitter at Google for EDU or the Facebook page, Google for Education. There's lots of um, official event hashtags that you can follow. Um, hashtag learning with Google will be very um, popular that day and before and after the event. Also Google EDU and other ones that you can see there. And then you can also make your own photo frame um, for your profile picture to show that you're going to be attending this event and being part of great learning that's going to be happening. And you'll see uh, Stephanie has posted in the uh, the chat here. Throw it up there. Um, here's a, was this crafted by Google for Education? Yeah, so they sent out a sample how to tweet. So feel free to copy and paste and send this out on your Twitter. Um, and then you can invite guests that way. And that selfie frame is pretty cool. And the other great thing about advertising and sharing your learning on social media is, you know, you're, you're promoting engagement with your own GEG as well. So with all of our local GEGs in our state, if there are people who are not involved yet or want to get involved or what is a GEG, this is a great platform for us to advocate for our Google educator groups too. Yeah, so definitely tag your GEGs. A lot of them have a social media page and just use their Twitter handle so they can retweet you. Um, great idea. And then this brings us to what is a GEG? So a lot of people might not even know what a GEG is. So Travis, do you wanna tell them what GEG stands for? GEG stands for Google Education Group. And Eric, why should someone be involved in a GEG? Well, GEGs are a fantastic way to be plugged in to other educators in your area that are using Google tools. Now, it's going to be different uh, from state to state, country to country, because GEGs, they're grassroots. They're run by uh, educators for educators. So no two GEGs are going to be alike. But in general, it's going to be a great way to connect with others that love Google tools and are using them. It's going to be a great way to um, share ideas, to uh, learn new things that are coming out from Google to find out about professional development opportunities, um, possible events to uh, get plugged into as well. I know with uh, with Ohio, um, our GEG, we do a monthly uh, Google Educator Group meeting that's about two hours long where we cover everything new in Google and we take lots of questions and share uh, lots of neat creative ideas for how to use Google tools in schools. But again, every GEG is kind of its own thing. And you know what? You're allowed to join other ones besides the one of the state that you live in. So that's okay. You can join as many as you want and connect with wonderful people all around the world. And how do people find a GEG, Emily? There is, I think the link just popped up in the, in the chat, but there's a great website. If you lose that link, you can always just Google it, Google educator groups, and then you can search for them. So we've got a representation from all around the Midwest, sadly not Wisconsin, but all the other awesome Midwest ones are here today. And if that's not your area, you can find one in your area or just be an honorary Midwest person. I don't know why you'd pick that this week when it's negative a billion degrees where all of us are, but <laughs> you know. <clears throat> yeah, so you'll just click the map and then click what state you're in. So let's go to Michigan. 
And then the website typically will pop up um, with how to join more information about joining a GEG. Um, so right here it says join GEG Michigan and it will probably take you to a Google group email um, and you're able to join this group and connect with others. Um, so such a great way to learn about events going on in your state, um, connecting with other educators and asking those questions. Oh, and the next one, um, helpful information. So what advice do you guys wanna give for an event like this? What should people do during a session like this? For me, what I found that works the best is uh, treating it more like a marathon and not a sprint. If you recall, there was that um, Google thing that happened over the summer that was like, I don't know, 20 days in a row, 24 hours. I, I'm making it up, but it was like 24 hours straight, right? And it was very hard for me to keep up with that one. This one's nice. It's not going to be like a week's worth of stuff. Um, but the beautiful part is it's all on YouTube. So if you miss any of it, you can go back for it. But just kind of pace yourself is my advice. Have snacks. Yeah. To piggyback off of that, I would say allow yourself time to reflect and process on all the information that you're going to get. It is going to be a lot all at once, right? So take the time, take notes, and look back at it and reflect on how that's going to change your practices moving forward. Um, I feel like it's so easy to go to the sessions and then forget about them moving forward, but you really want to take that time to reflect and um, implement all of those changes. I typically try to have like a notepad and just jot down things as fast as what I can um, on paper. And I'm usually having a window that has the hashtag up as well, just so I can try to stay abreast of what other people are posting about it too. I always think it it's helpful to have a couple of goals going in of things you want to think about and things to watch for if there's something that you're particularly interested in. I know a lot of this group kind of mentioned that we're in tech integration type roles and knowing what you might want to bring back to the people that you work with is always a good idea too. Check out the hashtags on Twitter during and after the sessions. There's always some great information and great people you can connect with uh, on Twitter. And then I kind of want to share something that Eric's doing. So I'm going to put it in the chat and then Eric, you want to talk about your Padlet idea? Oh, sure thing. Uh, so um, one thing we're trying to do is let people connect during the event as well. Like here, we've got the uh, pre-show and I understand there'll be some after parties as well, but what about during the actual event? Um, because there'd be so much going on, we thought, well, what would be a nice way to have like a back channel to chat during that? So we put together a Padlet for uh, GEG Ohio, but again, anybody is welcome to join. You don't have to be from Ohio. It's perfectly fine. And so we're going to have uh, this Padlet's already live now, so you can jump in it now, but we're going to be using this all throughout the event to be able to share our questions, our thoughts, our reactions, our ideas, and uh, that would give us a chance to have some chatting going on while we're watching this live as well. So please feel free to join in on that Padlet. Um, also, make sure you sign in on that Padlet so we can connect with each other or add like your Twitter handle or your email or something. That way we can connect after the event because you do have to sign in. Um, so like you can see John, his name's up there already. Um, but he had to sign in because if not, it's going to show up as anonymous. So that's one tip. <laughs> Any other tips or should we go on? I would say as you're connecting with people through Padlet or social media or whatever channel it is, um, you know, connect with other educators in your area that do similar things like you so that you have someone to bounce ideas off of after the event is over, right? You always want to continue that learning. And then we try to ask May from Google to come on today, but she was unable to. So she just left us this nice little slide. Um, just saying thank you for everything that educators do for our students. Um, she's really appreciative of everything that we do. And she wanted to share um, this brand new Google Education Classroom video series. 
Um, it has great tips and tricks that you're able to kind of look at to improve your practice. Um, there were, I went through the whole series and I learned a ton of new tricks. I don't know if anyone else um, did. I learned how to gamify my Google Classroom uh, and creating like a Google Classroom header. And one of those videos walks through like how to do that and the idea of it that I never thought of. So I thought this video series was really helpful. Anyone else able to watch it that wants to share like something you learned? I like the whole hybrid sessions with uh, Emma Pass. <laughs> those were fantastic. Yeah, she did a really good job. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining GEG Midwest. And we look forward to connecting with you guys um, through Twitter and throughout the week as the event happens. So make sure to tune in to Learning with Google. Um, should I feel like we need to leave like with a dance party or something. We, we could. Or <laughs> wild speculation might be fun. We could... Uh... What crazy things might we expect? The the Apple version of, oh, and one more thing. What do you think Google's going to do with that? Anyone? Well, I think it's probably time for them to change the name again, right? You know, um, <laughs> we, we've only had Google Workspace for a little bit. So uh, see Google Apps, G Suite, Google Workspace. Time for a new name. How about the icons change? Yeah, new icons. <laughs> oh, yeah. all. Let's make them all the exact same color and shape. I'm almost figuring out how to click on them now, so that 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 would help. How about how about a reboot of the Google Glass, maybe with some um, blue light protection for our virtual meetings? Can we get some of that? Or Chromebooks with like a ring light built in? That'd be cool. <laughs> I'm so that for that, fun. you know, Rick. <laughs> More make makeup filters for meat. Like built in. Makeup. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. <laughs> thank you so much for coming to today's Global GEG presentation. Make sure you go to our website at globalgeg.org to find more information and ways to connect with us. One way you can connect with us is going to the website and joining our Google group. This will allow you to get a weekly email about upcoming events that Global GEG is hosting. Don't forget you can share this recording with other educators or revisit it at any time at the same YouTube link. If you need a certificate of attendance, make sure you fill out the feedback form. Thank you again for joining us at Global GEG.